show for me.
to trouble our hearts and minds that the water may become at the latter end. Bless those that are here. Bless those that are listening in on this day. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for departing your Father. Coming, hanging on the cross, dying, laying in the tomb. Getting up early on Sunday morning. Affording us this privilege to get up on this Sunday morning to be here. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. O oh, shout glory. Glory. Tell God, thank you. Thank you. God, hallelujah. Oh, praise him like you love him on this day. Hallelujah. Tell the men of man that God made it for good.
two verses will a subject matter. On this day, I was preached with a spiritual guidance with this thought in mind. You may have to put everyone out. You may have to put everyone out. Nelson Mandela, South America's first black president, said in one of his quotes, I am fundamentally an optimist, whether that comes from nature or nurture, I cannot say. Part of being an optimist is keeping one's head pointed toward the sun, one's feet moving forward. There were many dark moments when my faith in humanity was solely tested, saying Nelson Mandela. But I would not and could not give up my self to despair. A very strong statement made by him by holding on and not giving up. My brothers and sisters, solitude can benefit us greatly if we use that time to sort through things with the with the Father, with whatever is on our mind and in our heart. As we rise up in the morning, it would be helpful for us to plan our day, carving out some of the, our time to spend alone with the Creator. In life, we all have struggles regardless to who we are in this walk with Christ. Struggles give its competitors something to look forward to. That's why we should never underestimate the violent efforts in the face of difficulties or opposition. And the reason why is because in all honesty, on any given day, anyone and everyone is struggling with something in their lives. Yeah. Some people are better at hiding it than others. If you allow me to keep it, as you might say, real, real, just for a moment, just think about it. There are people that come to church looking for spiritual and emotional healing to cope with their problems. Am I right about it? Amen. They put up fake smiles to hide their true emotions, even though they absolutely don't want to smile or feel like smiling, but they feel rather like crying they feel sad and they feel angry on the inside, but they force themselves to smile. Appearing happy on the outside. And if you are not mindful, you could be one of those individuals yourself. Now, someone had to wrestle with some issues this morning when you got up out of, of the bed. 
And believe it or not, Brother William, there's going to be somebody that's going to lay down tonight wrestling with issues. Your flesh don't like you and it's going to attack you as often as it can because we are all in the same game. Separately different levels. Apostle Paul said it best in the seventh chapter of Romans by saying, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwell no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good. He said, I find not. Yeah. In other words, Apostle Paul is saying his flesh keeps getting in his way and it won't leave him alone. There is a raging battle going on day and night between the flesh and the spirit of God. Whether you believe it or not, as an optimist, you are involved in the battle between negative and positive power, yes. evil and good, the real and the counterfeit, light and darkness, and right and wrong. That's right, that's right. Yes. Yeah. As Christian, putting on a facade, concealing your hurt, will not stop the adversary sorry, for enslaving your mind and your thought process. Yes. yes, my brothers and sisters, this life is full of struggles even when you are doing your absolute best. But don't confuse your present day struggle, your present day trials with your predetermined destination. Because God got the last say so. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just because it's stormy now doesn't mean that you're not headed into the sunshine. Amen. Yes, sir. Job made a strong statement in his 14th chapter when he said, Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Yes, we are born that God might get the glory out of our life, but my brothers and sisters, if there's no struggle, there can be no glory because Romans 8 and 18 tells us, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in you. us. Unlike Apostle Paul, you may find yourself somewhere wanting to give up, go in another direction. But whoever you are, I just stopped by today to tell you that God has seen you struggle. So you must keep talking to him and listen to his instructions. Even though this nation is in a grave need of an antidote that will counteract this corona or this COVID-19, I believe that this nation is in a greater need of Jesus the Christ with a spiritual antidote because of the fall away from the word of God during this unsafe time caused by this pandemic. Yeah. Some are using this pandemic as a time not to pray. Yeah. They'll use this pandemic as a time not to study. Yeah. They'll use this time during this pandemic not to as a time not to support the church and a time not to support others. They're using this time not to meditate. But instead of you using it the way God has allowed
all that to happen in our life is a time that we can be still and know that He is God. What we should be, we should be not falling away from God, but falling to God, returning back to our first love, and that's your perfection in Jesus the Christ. Seventh chapter, Second Chronicles 14, verse tells us that then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my faith, turn from their wicked ways, and I will hear from heaven, and he said, I'll forgive their sin and I will restore the land. I heal the land. Yes, yes, well, the scripture tells us that we do not wrestle. With flesh and blood. Yes, sir. But we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age. Yes. And because of this type of struggle, the warning that David, that he spoke so clearly about that comes in the morning. It lets us know that we have to hold on and we have to hold out. The fight do not belong to you, but it belongs to the Lord. David, when he said that we've been May endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. But I stop by to let you know, my brothers and sisters, sometimes to get to that joy that comes in the morning, you have to get rid of some of that distraction that's all around you. Sometimes you have to steal away to another room in the house. Sometimes you may have to even get in your car and go somewhere and talk and talk to the Lord. And even sometimes you may have to put everybody out. In our text today, we find a man named Jacob. Well, who was faced with many struggles as he grew up into the life that he was. The man God wanted him to be was far away from his plans at that particular time. According to the scripture, Jacob even wrestled with his twin brother Esau while he was in his mother's womb. As it because reflects, Jacob wrestled all through his life. And the reason Jacob wrestled was so much like us today. We had our own agenda. And we wanted to do it our own way. But I stopped by to let you know that God got a purpose for all of our life. He had a purpose for Jacob's life. How many of you know today that no matter what you've been through, no matter what you're going through, God got a purpose for your life. No, it may not seem right now. No, it may seem like the earth is turning the opposite way and you are going. But I stopped by to let you know God is not confused. He knows exactly what he's doing. Jacob was the third link of God's plan to restore the nation from Abraham. However, Jacob, he had his mind all made up. He wanted to do it his own way. He wanted to go separate from God's plan, God's divine purpose in his life. Jacob wanted to live independently of the purpose in life in the way he wanted to. 
my brothers and sisters, uh, it ain't always uh, what it looks like. Uh, there's a price that comes uh, with the calling. Uh, you got some uh, that want to step out uh, in this ministry. Uh, they think it's all of that uh, full of lime, uh, full of glitter. Uh, but I stopped by to let you know uh, that the price that comes uh, in every calling of the ministry, uh, it takes sacrifice, uh, it takes commitment. Uh, you have to do uh, what God tells you to do. Uh, like many of us, uh, we'll face the struggles uh, in our life. Uh, Jacob relied on uh, his own resources uh, and rather than going to God uh, for help. Uh, Proverbs, uh, the third chapter, uh, the fifth verse, uh, it tells us not to uh, trust in the Lord uh, with all their heart uh, and lean not to your own uh, understanding. Uh, how do we learn? Uh, we learn uh, from Jacob's life uh, that security doesn't uh, always lie in your accumulation uh, and what you have. Uh, he thought just because uh, he had inherited all of this uh, from Laban. Uh, he thought that uh, he had it all made. Uh, he left his country uh, with nothing but a walking cane. But whenever he hooked up uh, with Laban, uh, he got all these things uh, that Laban had. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, I stopped by to let you know uh, that it doesn't matter uh, how much money you got. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, how many homes you got. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, how fast your car might be. Uh, when God get ready uh, to change direction uh, of your life, uh, God's plan. Uh, God's purpose, uh, it will be done uh, if you allow me uh, to say this uh, sometime, uh, sometime, uh, sometime, uh, we get caught up uh, in our own self-righteousness, uh, think we know everything, uh, think we can't uh, take advice uh, from nobody else. Uh, we feel like uh, God is only speaking uh, to you uh, and not the head. Uh, but I stop by, I stop by, I stop by to let you know uh, you know uh, as long uh, as you walk around uh, with that attitude uh, thinking nobody uh, can tell you nothing. Uh, and you got all uh, the answers uh, just because uh, you got money in your pocket uh, just because uh, you got a house sitting on the hill uh, just because uh, you got a good job uh, I want you to know uh, that there is something uh, there is something uh, there is something uh, that can come in your life uh, that can cripple you to knock you off uh, your feet. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, now Jacob, uh, he heard, uh, he heard uh, that his brother uh, was coming. Uh, but what he wanted to do uh, when he went back uh, to his homeland, uh, he wanted to go, uh, but he remembered uh, what he had done. Uh, so now he sends uh, he sends uh, a fleet uh, in ranks uh, to his brother uh, carrying him all these things uh, that his brother already had. Uh, trying to make peace uh, because he was scared. Uh, because he was scared uh, what his brother uh, was going to do to him. Uh, but I stopped by uh, to let you know uh, the battle still uh, don't belong to you, uh, but it 
is the Lord. Uh, if you allow me uh, to use this scenario, uh, this little saying here, uh, you see every now and then, uh, God, uh, God, uh, he'll let you get in uh, the box ring uh, all by yourself. You get in there, uh, you want to fight, uh, you give it your best. Uh, you're giving it all you got, uh, and it seems like uh, you can't make it, uh, but it seems like uh, the enemy is overcoming uh, and stepping in. Uh, you spend all that time, uh, you spend all that time, uh, so you say, uh, studying the Word of God. Uh, how many of you know uh, that the Word of God uh, really will you uh, for the battles of the day? Uh, in the battle of tomorrow. Well, while we in uh, the ring, uh, we're trying to fight uh, the battle that's before us. Uh, but God, uh, but God uh, is sitting back uh, with his arm crossed, uh, letting you do uh, your own thing uh, because you think uh, you got it all uh, figured out. Uh,
He couldn't win. He realized he was losing the battle. You see, the adversary, he know how you feel. He know how you think. That's why you have to take control of your thought process. See, this man while racing, wrestling with Jacob, Jacob was so confident that he was going to win that the man sensed it and he says, look, I'm going to be wrestling you all day long, all day, all night long. Look, let me go. It's almost daybreak. Jacob said, mm-hmm. No, 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 no. So, the man, he pulled out a trick. He touched him in his hip. See, I know what I do. I handicap it. I, I take away some of what he got. But Jacob kept right on fighting. When you wrestle with the devil, if you come out and don't have any battle scars, you haven't been in a fight. There need to be some sign that you want. He had the battle star, but he said, no, nah. I know what's awaiting me, and I'm not going to turn you loose until you bless me. And now, the man, because he want to be loose before daybreak, now he's basically trying to compromise with Jacob. What's your name? You knew my name when you came to get me. What's your name? My name is Jacob. Well, I want to change your identity. So when Esau look for you, he won't know your name. I'm just going to change your identity. I'm going to fix you up for the witness potential plan now. Your name is no longer going to be Jacob. It's going to be Isaac. No. I ain't turning you loose. You bless me. I need more than a name. I need more than a name. And he changed his name. Then Jacob asked him, what is your name? Now he wants to get all arrogant. What do you want to know my name for? But it doesn't matter. We know who the adversary is. And we can beat him at his own game. But like I said, every now and then, you just have to steal away. Put everybody out. Go into your secret closet. The Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou I will draw thy hand from me, Lord, where will I go? He hears your prayers. He knows what you're going through. So whoever you are today, do an evaluation of your surroundings. When I 
Isaiah told Hezekiah to get this house in order. And he turned his head to the wall. I'm quite sure he didn't have people standing around him in the room. I'm quite sure everybody was out. Because he poured his power out to the Lord. So every now and then, you may have to put someone out. Don't mean you got to stay out. But at this particular time, you may have to put them out. So today, I don't know who you are, but I say unto you, cash it. He cares upon the Lord because he cares for you on this day. And if by chance right now you are struggling or going through something and you don't know Christ for the party of your sin, know that he's right there. All you got to do is Call on him. Stop letting your surrounding keep you from your blessings. Still away. Talk to God. Tell him all about your problem. And he's just to work it out. Love and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the hearts and minds that you have touched at this hour. Now, dear Heavenly Father, allow that individual Lord, to set aside self-righteousness. Allow you to come into their life. That they may talk to you and you with me. Bless every home that's listening in on this day. Every individual. Bless those that have pressed their way out to be here in this service here on this day. Father, we thank you for what you've done, what you're doing right now. We thank you for what you're going to do. Father, we declare and decree that COVID-19 will not separate us from the Word of God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be set in thy sight. The Lord must have been my room.
Hallelujah. 